Hello everybody, it's Adam Hurd with 973 Ramp again, um, and this is a video that some of you might have seen coming, but I'm sure a lot of you didn't, and we are doing a video on Google Docs now, uh, Google Spreadsheet specifically, and I guess we are also talking about Excel a little bit, because uh, it is the same thing, I mean this is pretty much Excel you're looking at, uh, and how it can be used for FRC. So I feel it can be used for literally anything in FRC. We do our travel arrangements in Google Spreadsheets, we do our scouting in Google Spreadsheets, we do design in Google Spreadsheets. I even do some system modeling uh, with actual control loops in Google Spreadsheets, which is crazy. I spend most of the time I'm in MATLAB there, but I do do some in Google Spreadsheets. So I don't want to teach everyone how to use Excel or Google Spreadsheets here. I feel like there's a lot of good information out there, but I'm gonna loosely talk about what it can do do a quick example um, and hopefully get people excited, one, to do a little more math on their robots, and two, utilize Excel or Google Spreadsheets. I prefer Google Spreadsheets for a couple reasons uh, in their design. So pretty much these are all boxes that you can type whatever you want in, and cool, okay, you have stuff, type numbers in there. But then if you type equal sign, and this isn't going to be a great demonstration of Excel or anything, if you want to learn Excel, I recommend you look at YouTube videos for that, and there's a lot. So hopefully I inspire you guys to want to learn it, and then you guys can learn the specifics there. Uh, but most of the basic stuff is pretty easy. Like you can say equals, and then select that cell times 27. Oh, it's that times 27. And there's even formulas, so you could even do square root. Uh, Google Spreadsheets is nice now in that it coaches you through all the formulas now if you have new Google Sheets turned on. You have to Google that and go under settings, and it'll tell you how to turn that on. Um, and you can make things that are this cell divided by that cell plus that cell plus random number, you know, plus the max of these numbers divided by the average of that number plus the row that cell E27 is. So obviously that would return 27 because that's 27th row. So ooh, what did we get wrong? What function? Random. It's Rand, actually. I knew better. So clearly, there's a lot of power here. I mean, that's a calculator. So I like to do, uh, everyone has seen John V. Noon's calculator. And if you haven't, actually, I guess everyone has not seen that. John V. Noon on Chief Delphi, I think his username is JVN, has some great design calculators on there. Um, but I encourage people to tweak them, make them their own. You could actually upload it right to Google Spreadsheets and make it your own, or learn to make your own, or, or maybe you use this for other things. But I'm going to do an arm real quick on this kind of stuff. So I'm going to say these are the motor specs. So we got free speed, and I love putting units on things. That's really important. Stall torque. And this can be kind of simplistic. We're going to skip some of the things you would have in a motor spec sheet uh, for the sake of making this video quick. And number of motors. So let's go with a sim. Of course everyone has all of these numbers memorized. And we'll go with two. Um, and then we do gearing. And I'll come back in and format these and make them a little prettier. So we have stage, pinion, spur, ratio. So, so you know sometimes these will be named. Like let's say uh, we're doing an anti-mark planetary into some Vexper gears into chain. I'm just guessing these now. So these are, these could change. Uh, so this is 1 to 3.67, I believe. Uh, I just do 1. I mean, if you really wanted, you could do the ratio there. But we don't know what I know. It's 3.67 to 1, so we'll do that. And uh, disregarding whether or not these spurs actually fit, you may check afterwards that the ones I type in may not work. We're just going to run with this and see that it all fits. And 12 to 60 or something. So then we'll come in and say this is equal to that divided by that. And a cool trick is you can drag formulas down. So it will make it the next row. And there's ways to make certain things drag and certain other things not drag. And I don't want to go too much into that unless there's a lot of demand. So we're going to keep this simple for now. So we're going to say the overall ratio is the product of this range. So boom, if you were doing this stuff by hand, one, you couldn't have kept up with me, and two, w w what if I change this, and now you got to redo your hand calcs? Well, this is automatic, so cool. Um, one thing I do like to do is kind of model uh, my motor as a combined motor at the arm joint. So I'll come in and do combined motor, and I'll steal these same headers. 
and I'll say that the free speed is that. And we're going to neglect friction for this example, just to skip that, because I'm not teaching arms, I'm teaching Google Docs. So free speed is going to be equal to the free speed of the motor divided by the gear ratio. Stall torque is going to be the stall torque times the number of motors uh, times the gear ratio. Stall current will be you know this times the number of motors. So now we can treat this as a motor at the shoulder joint essentially. So we can come in here and be like arm spec. And every arm in FRC, uh, at least a rigid arm, one that's multi-jointed, this would change with time, can be modeled as a length and a weight. Um, so let's say we have an arm that's 56 inches long and there's 17 pounds on it. Maybe that's a combination of the gain piece plus the weight of the arm attributed at the tip. Um, and you'll see that this comes out to a torque actually, and we can just put that as a cell if we want to make that more clear. This is the torque that the arm is uh, requires to be held up horizontal when it's horizontal. So we'll just make that. Notice I'm putting units on everything. You really should. So this arm requires 952 inch pounds to be held horizontal, um, and you can already see that our uh, motor has way more than that. So we're in good shape there, but this is two sims and this isn't an insanely heavy arm because that length isn't crazy for FRC. So we could do something like what is the percent stall right now? Uh, what percentage of our stall torque are we using? We'll do that divided by that. I like leaving my percents in my calculators uh, as decimals. Other people may not. May not. We can do what the speed is. Um, so for it, that percentage of stall we'll know we're at 1 minus that percent of free speed and uh, I don't want to teach this stuff in this video, but if there is demand, let me know and we can do that another. Uh, you could do something like uh, degrees traveled. Uh, we'll do 90 and then make this time to travel. And this would be uh, that divided by 360 to get in rotations divided by, where am I looking for RPM, divided by 60. Uh, so it takes two and a half seconds to travel this 90 degrees. Oh, I should have. Oh, I did divide by the right speed. Cool. At our worst case speed. And it actually would not be at the worst case speed the whole time. So obviously, it is not a shock that we are such a low percentage of stall because this is two sims, big R. So uh, some things I like to do that are good practice is I like all my stuff to be centered when appropriate. So I'll center that, you know, put borders around stuff. Um, oh, we'll get rid of that number of motors there because that's not applicable. Um, one thing I also like doing to make things a little easier if you're going to share with other people is uh, color coding. So like you can make stuff, what we do on our team is green means you can edit it. And orange means something that you shouldn't edit because it is either the responsibility of someone else or it is a formula. And nothing will piss people off more than overriding their formulas. So you guys can use your imagination to fill in the rest. Uh, you can come in, you know, and then rename this arm. And what's cool is, you know, we could come in and add another tab and maybe this would be our elevator. And, you know, maybe we come in and we have our drivetrain. So now you can have one Google Talk that different people can have access to. Some people could have read write access. Some people could just have read access. Uh, and you could do it page by page as well. You can even select certain cells that people can or can't edit. You can have this one Google spreadsheet that can be accessed anywhere. You can do it on your cell phone. And it works pretty well on the cell phone now. So you could actually come in and do meaningful iteration of these gear ratios and motor spec. And if you get fancy, you could actually have a table of motors over here. And this could be a drop down so that you just select sim two and it does all this for you. And you could even do that, you know, with X gears. It only let you select what gears are available for sale, that sort of thing. Um, you can really do meaningful work on a cell phone or tablet. I know I would like to get stuff set up, and then when I got some free time, uh, like during a slow lecture or you know waiting for someone to pick me up or that sort of thing, you could do stuff. Uh, we use that same capability for our scouting system. So yeah, I love Google Spreadsheets. I use it for almost everything. I use it in my personal life. Use it for the team. Use it at work. I think everyone should use Google Spreadsheets, and they're not paying me any money. And hopefully I've inspired some of you to consider it, uh, or separately at least consider doing some math of some sort for your robots using Excel versus doing everything as a hand calc. Because that, it, it's nice to be able to do things hand calcs, and often these will be set up by hand calcs, you know, all the 
equations I did in here, but it really should at some point go in a computer so you can reuse that effort over and over and not have to hand calc everything over again. All right, so hopefully that works out and hopefully